Welcome, everyone. I appreciate everybody's time. Friday night, you could have been anywhere else, but you chose to be here to be part of the Arrhythmus family, share knowledge, and also to grow as a security professional or upcoming security professional. I'm Dr. Emmanuel Ledoux. I'm going to be your facilitator for this, uh, for tonight's cyber chats as usual. So today's topic, uh, or tonight's topic, we are going to be looking at uh, what are some of the best uh, cyber security certifications in 2023, right? So we are going to start off here uh, and we begin time now. And we have folks coming in still, so uh, please bear with me if we are allowing, there is a little like delay here and there, right? So today's topic, uh, getting back on track, uh, is what are the best cybersecurity certifications for 2023? And uh, we will talk uh, extensively about cybersecurity certifications and the requirements and all that, and then also some insights uh, into uh, which one to pursue based on the career path that you are that you want to take, right? So uh, let's begin. Welcome to Arrhythmus Academy. Arrhythmus Academy facilitates this uh, program every Friday night. And uh, for everyone who is new to the family, if you've not already done so, we have some free uh, training, uh, uh, cybersecurity for beginners and also cyber for PCI for beginners. You can try your hands on those on Arrhythmus Academy's website. Uh, so let's begin. I'm Dr. Emmanuel Ledoux. I'm going to be your instructor for or facilitator for this uh, session. It's going to be a really informative discussion. Uh, I'm a former United States Army captain. I'm a QSA, I'm, a found, I'm the founder of Arrhythmus Academy, uh, also CEO for Arrhythmus Inc., a, P, a, PCI, D, a PCI QSA company based in New York, and also Arrhythmus Academy is a training, cybersecurity training institute based in New York. So uh, enough about me, we are going to move forward with, uh, so Memorial Day sales is still on, it's going to end on the 31st, and uh, just use Memorial 30 for any of our courses. Uh, and you should be able to take advantage of this to get 30% free, 30% uh, off any course that you choose, that you uh, want to take. So we are starting off with the definitions of um, what a cybersecurity certification is or certifications in general, right? So uh, we will first start off with a certificate and certification, right? So a uh, certification is a process. Certificate is the actual certificate that you get, right? In the process of getting a certification, you also get a certificate in that process as well, right? So for uh, certifications, normally you complete a course and you get a certificate. So if you go to any school, you take any uh, certificate course, once you complete the course, you get a certification of completion, right? Uh, that is not what we are going to talk about. We are talking about the certification aspect of this, right? So uh, also with the certification aspect, there is a certificate to it, right? So we are going to explain that and Almost everybody on here should be familiar with cybersecurity certifications, like the process that you have to go through, and then uh, the paper that you're going to show for or to show to uh, employers that you have you've gone through the certification process, and this is the certificate that you got out of it, right? So cybersecurity certifications or information security certifications or IT certifications in general uh, is a process that you go through to demonstrate that you have the knowledge, skills, and abilities. Uh, to be able to do whatever job is within, you know, the scope of that certification, right? So when we narrow it down to just cybersecurity or information security, uh, you have demonstrated that you have a mastery of cybersecurity field or information security field, right? And these certifications, they focus on different areas or different aspects of cybersecurity, right? The different areas could be the soft skills or the technical skills or a combination of both. And they can also focus on uh, specific niches within the cybersecurity space. So uh, ethical hacking or uh, auditing or GRC or right. So it can follow any of those. But today we are not going to look at it from the perspective of the individual niches within cybersecurity, but we are looking at it from uh, what are the most popular and then also uh, what are the most that employers are looking for when it comes to certifications? And then we're also going to look at it from the beginner stage to intermediate to advanced right stage as well, right? So certifications, they demonstrate that you have the knowledge and skills, abilities to be able to perform uh, in the cybersecurity or information security space, right? So 
uh, certifications, they carry weight, like I always say. Uh, most people get it. I wouldn't say they get it twisted or uh, how, I don't know how they look at it. But some people think once you get a certification, that is it. You know, employers shouldn't even inter shouldn't even ask you anything. They should just take you uh, and you know give you that job. But it doesn't really necessarily work that way, right? When you the more certifications you hold, uh, the more uh, I wouldn't say liable, but the more you are expected to have the knowledge and skills that you know comes with those certifications, right? So. Uh, mostly, I wouldn't encourage you to get way ahead of yourself, right? You shouldn't drive. It's like you are driving at night. You shouldn't drive too far that you can see. So if your skills and your abilities, your knowledge is not up to, you know, where you need to be for that certification, uh, please make sure you you get the knowledge and skill and abilities to that level before you go sit for that exam. You can sit for that exam and pass, but that doesn't necessarily demonstrate that you have the knowledge and skill to back it up. An example, uh, most people will just get some dumb questions. We will get to all that, right? Prep questions, they'll just memorize a bunch of answers, sit for exam and pass without knowing a thing about the questions that they were asked, like they were answering, right? So in that instance, you have the certification, you, you can stack up certifications, but then when it comes to interviews, now, you know, uh, the truth is really going to come out because there are a lot of things that people on the other side doing the interview, they expect you to know because you hold those certifications, but you don't because you just memorized practice test questions and you just passed, right? And even if they don't interview you and, you, and they give you the job, what are you really going to do on the job, right? So certifications, they are good, but you are the certification not the piece of paper you are holding as a certificate that came out of the certification, right? So I hope uh, everybody, you know, uh, kind of gets where I'm going at with this, right? So for certifications within cybersecurity, information security and IT in general, they are issued by independent organizations such as trade or industry associations within the industry that are accepted within the industry, right? So uh, for certificates, if you go to, any of the trade schools or any of the boot camps, once you complete, you are going to get a certificate of completion. If you come to Arithmetic, once you've completed a course, you're going to get a certificate of completion for that course. If you go to college, you are going to get a degree for your know, cybersecurity or you know information security, whatever that you took, right? If it is a certificate course you took with them, you are going to get a certificate. But when it comes to certifications within the industry, uh, once you've gone through school, you've gone through boot camps, you still have to sit for these certifications to demonstrate that you have the knowledge, skills, and abilities uh, as required within the industry to be able to function effectively within, within the industry. So certification bodies, they are not academic bodies, right? Uh, they are independent uh, associations and trade organizations within the, the industry. So specifically cybersecurity or information security industry, uh, that will administer tests. And some, most of them also have their own training package that you can go through to pass your certification, right? But sometimes the funny part of the, of, of the whole setup is that you go through, like you go through their training and you think you went through CompTIA's training, so Security Plus should be easy. Uh, and they, are, they will look like totally like night and day, right? So the training will, will, will not really get you where you need to be for those. Uh, so mostly not to say taking a training from these, the main uh, certification bodies uh, is bad or anything of that sort, but mostly they are training uh, like way over there and the certification exams also is on some, you know, other tangent, right? So uh, for the certification bodies, uh, some of the popular ones, CompTIA, obviously, uh, ISC Square, ISACA, uh, GIAC, Cisco, and the rest, like there's a whole uh, list of them, CIPP, and there's a whole bunch of them also, right? But these are some of the very common uh, certification bodies. Now, anybody can come up with a certification body, right? But uh, it takes time for you to get recognized within the industry, and then also for you to get all the certification that you need as a, a certification body, right? for you to be really re uh, recognized.
Right. So uh, one of the very said like one of the very old certification bodies when it comes to cybersecurity is ISE Square. Right. Comtia came about not too long ago, uh, if I'm not mistaken, around probably 2009, 2010. Uh, don't quote me on that, but around that time ish is when Comtia came about. ISACA, uh, I think they've also been around for a while because of the auditing stuff uh, that they do. Uh, GI, AC, I'm not really sure when they came out, uh, but you know, uh, that is just a little background about these certification bodies. So these are some of the popular ones that are out there. Now for all these certifications uh, within cybersecurity, right? Once you've gone through, uh, it is a continuous process. If you get the certificates out of the certification, uh, after sitting for the exams and passing, uh, you also have to renew. Some you have to renew yearly, some you have to renew every three years, right? And we also call something uh, continuing education units and some other certification bodies will call it CPUs, some will call it CEUs. So you have to continuously demonstrate that you are keeping up, up to date with the industry, uh, what is going on with the industry. So if you are attending conferences, if you are attending webinars like this one, uh, if you are taking other certification courses, when it's time for you to renew any of these certifications, you can present that and automatically, they are if you, it meets the requirements set by that body, uh, they are going to renew your certification for you. Uh, if it doesn't, you probably have to risk it for the exam, or you have to. Uh, sometimes you have to take like a training through them to be able to get certified. So you don't necessarily have to risk it, the exams every uh, every three years or every year if that is uh, the case. Uh, but you know. They what is good about certifications is they are always pushing for that angle, which is continuous learning, right? Which is what you need within the cybersecurity industry, uh, anyways. So now we are going to look at some of the certifications, and uh, we will first look at why should you even bother to get a certification. So I kind of talked about that briefly. So one, uh, having a certification demonstrates to uh, industry players like your potential employer that you've you've gone through uh, the pain of preparing certain for and passing a certification exam. And not just that, but what happened to you throughout that process of your preparation. Uh, the learning portion, right? You are, you've gained the knowledge and the skill uh, to be able to work within the cybersecurity space, right? Now, this doesn't also mean if you don't have a certificate or if you don't have a certification, uh, it doesn't mean you don't have the knowledge and skills to work, right? Uh, but it's like, can you drive? And do you have a driver's license? You can drive without a driver's license, right? Without having a driver's license. And uh, if you have a driver's license, it's a plus because if we are picking uh, or we are employing a driver, uh, I'd rather pick somebody who has a license and you know who can drive rather than just somebody who can drive without a license right if driving without a license wasn't a crime or wasn't you know uh anything that borders on on law you can choose to drive with a license or not in this instance uh you can choose to work within the industry without a certification or you can choose to work with a certification right but because it is always a continuous process uh you can start working without the certification and work towards a certification some jobs will even ask you Hey, we require you to have maybe CISSP or Security Plus. If you don't have it, we're still going to employ you, but within six months, you should get it, right? So at least they give that, you know, uh, room or they allow you to have that allowance uh, to be able to really uh, maybe polish up on the skills that you need to be able to pass those certifications. But if you have the certification, it gives you that edge, right? If you have a certification, it gives you that edge that at least you have the knowledge and skills uh, that is supposed to back that certification. So all these certifications, they have their own curriculum that you have to go through, and those are what they use for their exams uh, objectives, right? So the exams uh, objectives, all questions are drawn from them. Uh, and if you're able to pass, it demonstrates that you have what it takes uh, to be able to you know, work within the security field. If you don't, still you can demonstrate that, you, like you can demonstrate that you have the knowledge and skill, during interviews, right? But regardless whether you have a certification or not, during interviews, you still have to prove yourself, right? So <clears throat> the last thing you want to do is to come to an interview with 
five or six certifications and you have no clue what you are doing, right? In terms of anything that they are asking you, you know yourself, you don't have the knowledge and skill to be able to back uh, whatever certifications that you are holding, right? So like, I'm going to repeat this the whole entire time. You are the certification, not the piece of paper you are holding. So make sure you have the knowledge and skill, pair that certification to be able to, you know, uh, back whatever certification that you have. And then also for you, it's also going to boost your confidence during interviews. And you can boldly tell somebody I have Security Plus and have the, the working knowledge required for Security Plus, right? So uh, these are some of the reasons why you need cybersecurity certification. So now let's go into what are some of the best cybersecurity certifications that companies are looking for or are seeking, right? And this list is from a uh, top 10 list from different uh, avenues within the industry, right? That is what, like what I was saying. So this is not just Dr. Edu picking this list, but this is a list from different research within the industry and we combine it. So it's like top 10 and we also combine it with our own insights in the industry. Okay. So uh, let's begin. We are going to begin with the very common ones uh, and all these are going to be categorized based on uh, entry level and intermediate and advanced. And then also uh, we just added a twist with pen testing route, right? So uh, anybody who wants to do the pen testing route will also know what type of certifications to target, right? So the first uh, category that we will look at is the entry level certifications. So for entry level certifications or for certifications in general, you cannot talk about security uh, or information security certifications without mentioning Security Plus, right? Security Plus has become uh, the starting point in everybody's cybersecurity career, right? So you can start a cybersecurity job or your first cybersecurity uh, job without Security Plus, but uh, if you really want to excel, uh, as we are moving forward, you want to gain the knowledge and skill. Uh, you want to have uh, like a really solid background when it comes to working knowledge. You need to take Security Plus, right? Now, don't go the route or like somebody will say, don't play yourself. Don't go the route of getting Security Plus without knowing what what you're supposed to know within Security Plus. So, uh, i.e., if you are taking the Security Plus exam and you don't know half or 70% of what is on there in terms of questions, but you, you remember the answers from somewhere and you are just answering, that is a big no-no, right? You should be able to pass Security Plus on your own merits. And most students, uh, we have students who come from no background, zero IT, zero cyber security background, who go through the entry level course. I think the highest score we've had for Security Plus, that is for those who've told me their score is 800, right? You are required to have 750 to pass. Uh, most people have 760, 770, they're about 780, but we've had somebody who came from zero, 800, and they passed it on their merits. They didn't memorize some test questions, they passed it because they understood most of the things that were uh, on the exam, right? Although, also don't get me wrong, you can study all you want, but uh, for best preparation, you have to make sure you get sample questions to look at, to see how the questions are structured, right? So that is part of your preparation, but your goal shouldn't be to memorize test questions and their answers, right? So some people go through the exams, like they will read a question and they are looking for 7.3, 7.3, like that is, they are looking for the answers. They are not even trying to understand what is being asked and try to go through. So if you go on the, like if you go to take the exam and, you know, 80% uh, of, the questions you've memorized didn't show up, obviously you are going to fail, right? And these exams, they don't come cheap. I think Security Plus is now 392 or something, you know, on those lines. For CISSP and the rest, some of them are uh, almost like 800 bucks. So you really want to be ready to take these, you know, because I, I don't know how many uh, $800 you have to spare. So I mean, you write it first time, fail second time, third time, right? So, uh, for any of these education exams, please make sure before you write them, you are well prepared. But then also, aside studying to be able to pass on your own merits, make sure you have some practice tests. Your goal should not be to memorize the questions and answers on these practice tests. 
you don't know for sure that they are going to show up or not. But if you really understand and you try to answer these questions on your own merits, come exams day, it's going to be easy peasy because and whatever they throw at you, you are going to be ready for it. Right. So for Security Plus is one of the most popular uh, security certifications out there. And it is certified. Uh, it meets uh, DOD certification. So for DOD within the Department of Defense, uh, Security Plus is big. It's one of the certifications that they need that they need for within, you know, uh, the cybersecurity professionals that they employ. So if you are trying to go the government side, the federal side to do DOD security jobs, uh, Security Plus is a must have, almost a must have. Now they're also trying to have it where uh, all military folks, you know, maybe in the next five years or so, all military folks should, as part of the prerequisite or as part of uh, their security awareness training, they should be able to sit for and pass Security Plus, which I think is really far out there, but you know, it's something that is doable, but I'm not really sure, but you know, it's something that is on their, uh, on their checklist, uh, on the DOD's checklist, you know, so uh, Security Plus, we are also, we are going to look at, I think for just Security Plus, we will look at how long the exam says, the price, and so yes, the price uh, for the exams, uh, you have to pay $392, right? If you are a student, uh, you can, there is like a student uh, discount that comes to your office. Uh, also, Arithmetic is a partner, uh, Arithmetic Academy is, uh, is a CompTIA partner. So for anybody on this call or in the Arithmetic uh, WhatsApp group, if you are trying to take Security Plus or any of the CompTIA certifications, if you get with us, uh, we have a 20% discount that we are going to uh, give to you free of charge, right? So uh, if you purchase the certification through us and we don't get commission or anything, zero. So where we are pushing out the whole entire 20% to all Arithmetic members, right? So if you're on this call and you are trying to take Security Plus, at least I think 20% uh, off will bring this to 312 or something, right? So at least you'll be able to save some 70 bucks. And that is something that we are we will give to everybody uh, on our platform, right? So for knowledge, uh, this is from Comtia. Comtia says you should have at least Com uh, Comtia Network Plus, but it's not always the case. You can still take Security Plus without Comtia uh, Network Plus, but you have to have a good working knowledge of networking and all other areas that are required uh, on these exams uh, objective, right? So for the exam, you have 90 minutes to complete and you have 90 questions to answer, right? I think five of them are uh, what they call simulation. So they are kind of drag and drop uh, version and you need 70, uh, 70, 750 to pass, 750 out of 900 uh, points to pass the exam, right? So uh, we are only going to go through the And for renewal, if uh, you took Security Plus and your three years, is valid for three years. If your three years is up, if you take a higher certification like Security Analyst, uh, Comptia Security Analyst or Pentest Plus, it is automatically going to renew Security Plus. So for most of these certifications, uh, I think it's only with Comptia. If you take a higher certification, the lower certification automatically renews, right? Uh, for ISE Square and uh, ISACA is not necessarily the case. Each of them are, you know, standalone certifications, so they don't, they are not automatically going to renew other ones for you. But when it comes to your certification, uh, like uh, when it comes to time to recertify other certifications that you took, you can submit those and they'll give you points, CEU points or CPE points, and you'll be able to use that to meet your certificate certification requirements, right? So whatever you are doing in terms of certifications, uh, they are going to help you when it comes to recertification on either of these uh, certifications. So for Security Plus, you don't have to write it again if you don't want to. Uh, CompTIA's website, they have uh, some CEU training as uh, where you can get continuous education and they give you the points and you'll be able to renew it, right? But if you also want to test your knowledge and skill uh, every, three years, that is also good. That is also a great way to really actually test yourself, right? So if you write it and you fail, you can always go back the C, uh, CEU route and 
or get certified again. But I don't think if you took this for the first time and you passed, then you are always keeping up to date uh, with the industry. You are going to, you know, fail this. And also, mind you, uh, for most of these certifications, or for these like certification bodies, they update their certification uh, knowledge uh, body of knowledge every three years, almost every three years, right? So, uh, may, because uh, maybe if you took Security Plus and you took the new, like you took 501, or uh, I think 501 was three years. Yes, you took, they just switched 501 to 601. If you took 501 when it just started, by the time it's time for you to renew, you probably have to take 601, right? So every three years, they also have to update to keep up with the industry, uh, with industry knowledge, right? So uh, let's move on. The next one, this is pretty new. Uh, Google Cybersecurity Certificates. Uh, maybe probably you've seen ads for this uh, on YouTube and other places. But this is a course that was uh, launched together with uh, Coursera, uh, with Google to teach cybersecurity. But this is a foundational or kind of introductory foundational course, unlike Security Plus. Uh, this doesn't really go in depth as Security Plus and it's not as hard or as technical as Security Plus. Right, you can take this through uh, Coursera. I think it was some deal that they struck with Google, right? So you can also start with this as one of the entry level points uh, in security. So with this cost is really, I think 50 bucks for uh, like uh, Coursera's uh, subscription is 50 bucks. So if you take uh, every month, so if you can take the course within a month, you only pay 50 bucks. And I think after completion of the course, they give you a certificate uh, you go through maybe some tests after the uh, after the completion of the course, and you get that certificate. Uh, you take that certificate uh, exam, and once you pass, your certification is done. You get the certificate, and you can also use that uh, as part of the cybersecurity certifications that you have. Right. So this you 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 don't need any prior experience or anything. Now, one thing that uh, I failed to mention with CompTIA Security Plus, uh, although it's entry level. It stays on there on their website and also on the in their exams requirements that you are supposed to have at least I think one to two years of experience or two to three years of experience. But eh, that is really not a big deal because for them you don't have to apply for the certificate or uh, apply once you pass the exam. So for anybody beginning from scratch, you can still start with that, right? Uh, you don't necessarily need a two to three years or one to two years experience. Uh, same thing with this, the Google Cyber Security Certificate. You can also take it uh, from coming into the industry, right? Now, uh, we have another one from GIAC, is the Information Security Fundamentals. This is also kind of the Google certification that we looked at. Uh, it's not as in-depth as Security Plus, uh, because Security Plus is hard, right? If you are trying to pass on your own merits, you have to really understand a lot of things, really good working knowledge in all areas of security. Uh, this is a fundamental, like a, a foundational course uh, that is not as in depth as Security Plus. Right? So, but this is also a good starting point for anybody who is trying to uh, take some course to get some situational awareness within the industry. Uh, this is also something that you can also take. Now, uh, ISC Square also is trying to uh, come up with something or they came up with something uh, that seems like it wants to compete with Security Plus, but not really. And that is certified in cybersecurity. They started this off with certified entry-level professional. And I was like, I think they stole the name from Arithmetic Academy's entry-level course. And I think like that was when they started it off and they were giving it out for free for people to uh, take the exams and take the training. Now, I think they settled on certified in cybersecurity as the name CC, as the name for this certification, right? So CC from, uh, from ISC Square is also, you know, one of the certifications that's ideal for people who want to start uh, working within the industry. Now, I'm just speculating. Uh, ISC Square, I think they came out with this because all their certifications are advanced certifications, right? Uh, CISA, not, not CISA, uh, CISSP, 
CC, SP, and the rest, um, almost all of them are mostly advanced level cybersecurity certification. So they are trying to get something that will be kind of match security plus, right? And others within those space. Uh, so that is why I think they came up with this. And also to make them uh, user friendly for people who want to start working within the security space and who want some certifications. That way they also they also want to take some of the market from CompTIA, right? When it comes to such certificate, like certifications at the uh, beginner level, right? So uh, this certification, you can also, I think the training is still free. I'm not sure, uh, but for the certificate to write the exam, I'm not sure if it's 50 bucks or hundred bucks, something on those lines, right? And all these certifications that we've looked at, they are vendor neutral, right? They are, and what do I mean by vendor neutral? So they do not focus on any specific vendor, right? Unlike certifications like AWS, architect, uh, cloud architect, and all those, all those are those ones are not vendor neutral. They are specific, and Cisco certifications are not vendor neutral. They are specifically for certain organization, right? So what we are looking at are just vendor neutral uh, certifications. All right, so let's move on to advanced or senior level certification options, right? And now once we've gone through that, uh, we will talk about mid-level certifications. Uh, so let's look at the advanced level. So we, we looked at beginner straight to advanced and I'll tell you why. So with advanced, we are going to look at what some people normally tag as the gold standard in cybersecurity when it comes to certifications. CISSP, Certified Information Systems Security Professional. Uh, this is, I think, the oldest certification, cybersecurity certifications, cybersecurity certification that is out there, right? And when it comes to the advanced certifications, uh, I'll say it's still the oldest and it's top, uh, top of the top, right? Uh, so far. Right, but when it comes to the entry level is security plus and uh comtia they were able to you know uh gain those grounds and capture that market see uh isaka this certification is through isa uh, no it's through isc square right isc square they are now trying to compete with the cc certification because they really lost focus on that side uh cissb is an advanced certification or uh Yes, advanced or senior level certification. The focus, the main focus of CISSP is not necessarily on the too heavy on the technical side, but more on the managerial and operational side of cybersecurity, right? So if you are looking to be a cybersecurity manager, CISO, uh, CIO, any of those uh, top management positions, then you need CISSP, right? Now, CISSP for somebody who is starting off, you can still write CISSP and pass, but you are not going to be a full blown CISSP, right? You are going to be an associate CISSP. So until you have five years of working experience uh, in the security field, you wouldn't be able to apply and get certified as a CISSP, right? So if you are new to the industry and you want to test your knowledge and skills, uh, you can prepare and sit for and pass CISSP, but then you are going to be an associate, which still looks very favorable on you because to pass CISSP is not easy, right? Uh, most folks who are in the industry, I run into somebody who, are take, who has taken CISSP. He's been working in cybersecurity industry for 15 years. He's taken CISSP eight times and he has not passed yet. So he has other certifications, pretty smart guy, but I don't know for some reason he's unable to pass CISSP, right? So it's not an easy exam. Uh, for CISSP, I think most people who fail, it's not because you don't know your stuff, but you have to master how they ask their questions and how you should answer them, right? An example, uh, most of the CISSP questions are very tricky. So the most a typical example, they ask most of their questions in the way of which of the following is the best option. Maybe an example, I'm just giving like an example, which of the following is the best uh, way to transmit data 
over the internet, right? And they have different uh, options there. So the key word there is which of the following is the best. Everything in, in the stack of answers are good. Which one is the best? That is the tricky part, right? Uh, if they just ask the question, which of the following is used to transmit data from point A to point B securely, that is easy, right? Because most of the answers are going to be wrong. Uh, maybe only two are going to stand out. And if you are able to look at it critically, you'll be able to choose your, the right answer. But if the, the question is, which of the following is the best? Which of the following is most likely? Which of the questions like that are a bit tough to answer? Right? So that is how CISSP, they ask their questions. And they've been around for a while. And they, they, they've gone above and beyond to protect the integrity of the exam, right? So that is why it is uh, really respected within the industry. And because it has been around for a long time, uh, most people hold it to a very high standard, right? So what I was talking about still goes to this. So if you are going to an interview, you have Security Plus, you have CISSP, and they are asking you questions and you are all over the place, you can answer simple cybersecurity questions. Now they start to doubt how you got CISSP and Security Plus and every other certification that you have, right? So uh, make sure you have the knowledge and skill. It's not just you trying to memorize. If you are not even memorizing the questions, right? You are going through, we have a CISSP book. If you are pretty smart, so you can just learn it without knowing anything, understanding it and go and sit and pass. You've passed, but you still have to go back to the books and make sure you are revisiting you know, most of these concepts that you maybe probably barely understood to write the exam, uh, that way you have a better understanding. So when you present yourself anywhere that, yes, I have Security Plus, I have CISSP, I have CISA, I have whatnot, you actually have the knowledge and skill to back it up. So for CISSP, uh, the average salary that, you know, folks with CISSP take, uh, I think from the, uh, the where we got this, uh, research from it was 145, but mostly within the industry is 120 to 100 and right, uh, 45 plus, right? Uh, there is really no limit, but at least if you have CISSB, I wouldn't take anything below maybe 110, 120, right? Uh, I've run into somebody who had CISSB who was taking 60K. You must be crazy uh, to have CISSB and take 60K. Or probably you don't know what you just, you know, you took the easy way out and you just winged it and were able to get CISSP. That is why you don't value yourself that much, right? But if you actually did the work and you have any of these certifications, please ask for more money because there is more money to be given, right? Right. So for candidates, if you sit, you pass CISSP. And for most of the advanced certifications, once you passed, uh, that is not it you can pass the exam and still not be awarded the certification like not be awarded the certificate right uh, so passing the exam is one thing now you have to apply uh, for the certification so as part of the application you are required to have at least five years of working experience uh, within the cybersecurity field for cissp and then also you need one guarantor who has cissp already to guarantee for you that yes, indeed, I know this person, he or she has been working within the industry for this long. Now, some people also take the shortcut and they don't have the five years, but they'll have somebody certified for them or that. I mean, that is all on you. It depends on you know where you, you like you stand on the ethical side, but the most important is whether you are a CISSP associate or you are a full-blown CISSP, you are required to have the knowledge and skill to back it up. So. Uh, now we are going to move on to the next advanced certification. Now, this is from CompTIA. So CompTIA's Advanced Security Practitioner, CAPS, CAPS Plus, uh, is a vendor neutral certification. Now, this certification uh, is, I will say, the only, the only advanced or, uh, yes, the only advanced uh, or senior level certification that is very technical, very, very technical, <laughs> is CAPS, right? And the focus here uh, for CompTIA, uh, they are trying to, I think they made this for uh, security folks who are very, and when I what I mean by very technical is this, uh, with CISSP and the rest, 
they focus, they have some technical aspect of it. So what I mean by technical is technical knowledge, including your working knowledge in photography, identity and assets management. Not so when I say technical, not coding, not, not necessarily coding or any of that, right? Uh, but when it comes to CAPS, you know, at least if you know a little bit of some uh, coding and some script here and there is going to help you because it's very, they focus on everything, right? Everything, including what you need, you know, to be a security engineer, security uh, architect and all of that. Uh, so they really don't focus much on the soft skills side, which is the operational and managerial leadership side of security, which the, all the other senior level or uh, advanced level certifications focus, like which they focus on, right? So uh, Security Plus, CISA, SIM, all of them, they focus on, uh, they kind of balance it out, the, the soft skill side and the technical side, even though the technical is not too technical. Right. They just want to see that you have a working knowledge. But with CAPS, it's very technical, very technical. So uh, if you are looking to take CAPS, uh, it is also going to help you. So with all these certifications that we're talking about, when you are tempted or when you try to sit for it, is it will not only boost your confidence, but you are going to learn a lot just going through that process. Right. So that is just if you really don't have anything going on, Try your hands on one of these, you know, uh, certification. Just have it as a goal. Within the year, at least I'm going to write two or three certifications, and you know, you just check them off your uh, checklist, right? Uh, and that is one way that you are going to stay abreast with what is going on within the industry. Right? So CAPS is one of the very technical ones that focuses on uh, senior security engineers and security architects and the technical leads. Right. So with this, uh, I think for CAPS, we are not going to talk about uh, uh, like how much I think for it's almost like four hundred or five hundred dollars to sit for this one. Uh, now, the next one that we are going to look at in terms of the advanced certifications is the GIAC security expert. Uh, that is GSE. Right. So with this certification, you need some prerequisites to be able to sit for this. Uh, and all those prerequisites are going to come from GIAC as well, right? Uh, you need, uh, I think in the list, you need the uh, uh, GSEC, GCIA, uh, GCIH to be able to uh, be ready to set for the GSE. Now, most of you are not very familiar or wouldn't be very familiar with GIAC certifications because one, they are very expensive, right? Very, very expensive. Uh, and for them, mostly you have to go through, not mostly, all of it, you have to go through their training before you can sit for their uh, certification exam, right? And the training together with the exam, some cost in tunes of $5,000, $7,000 plus, right? So they are very expensive. That is why it is not as common as Security Plus and the rest uh, that we see around. Right, so that is also a very good certification. It's being run by GI, uh, AC, and SANS, uh, SANS uh, Institute. So they have some of uh, really good training and good uh, certification package, right? But if you don't see it around a lot, uh, and if you don't see a lot of companies asking for a lot of employers uh, asking for it, uh, it's because it's very expensive. So uh, some of it are uh, not that much expensive. Uh, but I don't think they have any certification that is below $1,000. Don't quote me on that, but I think they don't, right? You can Google and go to their website and see for yourself. Their prices are on there. So now the next one that we will look at is Certified Cloud Security Professional. Now, this is one of, uh, I'll say, the leading cloud vendor neutral cloud certifications uh, that are out there, that, that is out there. Uh, this is also from ISE Square. And uh, this will prove that at the senior level, uh, you have the knowledge and skill when it comes to cloud computing uh, to be able to function within any organization, right? So there are a lot of other cloud certifications that are out there that are not, uh, that are vendor specific. So uh, Google Cloud have, you know, like they have their own certifications. AWS, they have their own uh, 
uh, Azure has their own, I mean, and the list goes on, right? But the ones that are vendor neutral, I think we have, Comptia has Cloud Plus and ISC Square has uh, the Certified Cloud Security Professional. But Cloud Plus, I don't really know where I'll put it, whether at a beginner or intermediate level, uh, but it is not an, an, an advanced uh, certification in my opinion. So now let's move on to the next one. We are we are jumping into uh, ISACA list of certifications. So with uh, the first one that we'll look at in the stack is Certified Information Security Manager. Now this certification is kind of, is kind of uh, almost on the same level with CISSP, right? Not in terms of difficulty uh, of getting the certification, but in terms of uh, how folks within the industry see it or how employers see this certification, right? Because it also focuses on operational, managerial, you know, uh, aspect of cybersecurity. But in terms of difficulty, I'll say the level of difficulty, uh, I'll say CISSB is more difficult than SIM. Not because SIM is easy, but uh, it's because of the owners of the certification. So ISC Square and ISACA, they have different ways of setting their questions, their exam questions. That is what makes CISSP difficult and ISP, uh, I, uh, and SIM not as difficult as compared to CISSP because CISSP is tricky. ISACA, they don't set their questions to trick you necessarily, right? So their questions are not as tricky as CISSP, as uh, ISC Square. Right, so that is why if uh, I say CSSB is more difficult to scale, it's not because it's better than SIM, but it's because of how they set their questions. That is why most people struggle with uh, passing CSSB. It's tricky, it's not because you don't know your stuff, but it's tricky. Now, uh, ISACA, they are kind of straightforward, a bit more like Comtia, right? Comtia, they are also straightforward. So mostly with most of their questions, uh, if you know the answer, I mean, sometimes it's obvious. You just read it and you pick your answer and you move your way, right? But with ISC Square, they always try to trick you. I don't know if that is part of the certification or part of the skills they are trying to have you gain or what, but, you know, uh, maybe that is what makes them, so, uh, that is what makes them ISC Square. I don't know, right? So, but for uh, SIM is one of the industry, you know, highly recommended uh, certifications in the advanced slash uh, senior level uh, within the cybersecurity space, right? And also just like CISSB, with all the advanced level certifications, you need at least five years of experience within the industry, right? At least five years. So with this, once you pass, you also have to get, you know, you have to apply for the certification and you also need uh, someone with SIM or with any ISC Square, uh, uh, ISACA uh, senior certification, such as C, uh, CISA, SIM, and the rest, to also guarantee or certify uh, you, right? Uh, or I think is I think you need like yeah I think like somebody on those lines or somebody that you've worked with like in a professional setting to say to speak to the knowledge and skill that you have within information security governance, information risk management, information security program development and management, and also information security incident management, right? So uh, this is the area that, the areas that your SIM uh, certification covers. Now, CISA, right? CISA is Certified Information Security Auditor. Now, CISA is by far uh, the most sought after information security auditing certification. And I think is the only one, only uh, auditing certification that is out there. Don't quote me on it. But so far as I know within the industry uh, is the biggest, right? In terms of uh, information security auditing certification, right? Is the biggest that is out there. Now, SIM, uh, CISA is also similar to SIM. You need the same requirements, five years plus of experience, but still, you can still take the exam, but until you have the five years, you are not going to be certified as a full CISA uh, professional, right? So uh, this also focuses, so the focus for 
CISA is on information security and then on auditing. So uh, if you know information security or cyber security, and you also have some auditing skills or knowledge base, uh, you can you know try your hands on this certification. Uh, and it's all it's, it's a really good uh, certification to try your hands on or even to pass and to have the certification. So for folks who are uh, who want to go the route of GRC, uh, this is something that should be in your sights, right, as part of your career path moving forward. Sim and CISSP should also be in your sights as part of your career uh, path, right, as part of the career path move that you want to make. Now, we are going to look at some penetration testing certification options. But before, before we do, uh, let's talk about interme uh, intermediate or yeah, intermediate certification options, right? So we looked at entry level, we looked at advanced. What are some of the intermediate certifications? So aside uh, CompTIA, that is very, uh, aside CompTIA that really uh, specifies which of their certifications are intermediate level. Uh, so for CompTIA, they are intermediate in terms of their career path for cybersecurity certifications. Uh, they are CompTIA Security Analyst Plus and they are CompTIA Pen Testing Plus, uh, Pen Tester Plus certifications. They are the ones that are intermediate, right? Aside that, everything else within the industry is like beginner and advanced. Now, with the advanced certifications, sometimes they, they are borderline or they are, yeah, to the stream uh, intermediate, right? So intermediate, they are kind of intermediate advanced. There is a gray, la like a gray area there. Intermediate advanced, sometimes CISSP and CISA, they will fall within that space, right? So that is why uh, mostly it's really hard to pick on and to say this is intermediate, right? Uh, so, but for intermediate, the ones that are the obvious ones, Security analyst, security, uh, security analyst from Comtia and Pentest Plus from Comtia, right? The other ones that may be out there that might be considered intermediate, but mostly that same, like those ones. Every certification that requires you to have at least five years of experience is not necessarily intermediate, but we can argue with this, right? It is mostly advanced because at that point, after five years, you are really now breaking from intermediate to advanced. So that is why I say there's a gray area right, right there. So between your four, fourth year, uh, fifth year, moving forward is a gray area between intermediate and advanced, right? So most of these certifications, we can classify them as intermediate and at the same time uh, advanced. But the ones, uh, the only certification body that I know that has really spelled out, hey, this is my intermediate, is Comtia. So that is why we didn't touch on really much on intermediate. Now let's look at penetration testing for folks who want to be pen testers or who want to be uh, who wants to pursue forensics. Uh, we are going to look at some of the certifications that are out there now. Most folks, when they we talk about pen testing, the certification that comes in mind is uh, ethical hacker. C E H is what comes in mind for most folks, but with unlike. The certifications that we just looked at for Security Plus and the rest, when it comes to penetration testing certifications, uh, you might want to be careful, right? Because uh, you can't just parade yourself. You can parade yourself and let your, let your friends know you are cool. You have uh, maybe CompTIA Pen Test Plus or you have an Ethical Hacker, but can you really hack anything? Can you really perform a pen testing, like a full-blown pen testing on anything, right? If you want to have it for academic purposes and also for the knowledge and skill, that is fine. But uh, for pen testing, mostly uh, or for the offensive side of security uh, is you can either do it or you can't do it. There's no gray area. Unlike maybe you get security plus, you become security analyst. There are always some gray areas that you can always you know, apply skills from elsewhere to it. And not saying you cannot do the same thing on the ethical hacking or forensic side, but on that side, uh, if you wanna look at it this way, it's either you can drive or you cannot drive. There's nothing like explain to me how the car works and any of those, you can drive or you can't drive. So it's like, okay, go ahead, you know, hack your way through this and let's see. So that is what I'm saying, you know, if 
you manage to get yourself any of these certifications and you want to pursue a pen testing career, uh, you probably have to get yourself on some level where you are practicing with some CTFs, capture the flag exercises, and you are following some pen tester around, you know, helping you learn pen testing. Uh, the actual doing, the, uh, the actual, you know, testing, the actual penetration testing itself, right? Or the ethical hacking itself. Not just carrying the certification and saying, yeah, I have that, so I know ethical hacking, right? I think uh, I ran into one guy, is a guy, right, uh, who wanted a job for on some board that I sat on, who wanted, who wanted to apply to become a pen, like a, who was he was applying for the penetration testing position he had pen testing uh he had c ceh and what else did he have i think some other certifications and during the interview they we didn't even ask him to do anything we're just asking him normal common pots when you do your fair okay so walk us through the process uh you are supposed to do a pen test right uh what are some of the processes walk us through and also when you're actually doing it what is the first thing that you have to do you know uh You've done your research. First thing that you have to do, what is the first scan that you have to do? This guy was all over the place. You could easily see that he's never actually scanned anything before, right? He's not actually went through the process of scanning, identifying some vulnerable ports and protocols, trying to attack which one first, doing research on what exploits he's going to use. To, he's not done any of that, right? But he's carrying himself around as a pen tester, right? I mean, you can carry yourself around as a pen tester and feel good all day. That I don't think anybody is going to pay you 100 plus to break their system, right? Or if you even know how to break it. So when it comes to these certifications, CompTIA Pen Test Plus is a written exam, right? You are not actually going to do anything. So they are testing your knowledge base. So this you can pass. If, uh, but from my experience, right? From my experience, uh, if you try to take CompTIA, uh, Pen test plus, and you actually have the hands on experience. You've done a lot of uh, ethical hacking, you know, hands on practice. The exams becomes very easy. Right. When I took CompTIA uh, Pen test plus, there were a lot of mistakes on the exam, right? Some of the answers they were given were even for like for, for, for the commands that they were like that was supposed to be the right answers. They were wrong. Some were backwards. Some were supposed to be you know, so because i knew too much than what they had on there and that was when they have just started the pen test uh exam right but if i had taken it without knowing anything and i just read some books and tried to figure it out uh i will still have maybe probably passed but what really could i have done with it right not much right but uh my point is for this, so I'm I'm building a, like a point here. I'm going to, as we are going through like the pen testing uh, side, uh, I want you to know that if you want to venture into that side, it is more hands-on. You have to practice doing penetration testing. An example, capture the flag exercises uh, from, they have like different websites. So I know some folks, uh, the first it was hack the box. And then uh, I don't remember the name of that one, but they look similar to hack the box. So I suspect is also through hack the box and where they teach you pen testing from scratch and all that. But uh, what I'll say is just if you want to do pen testing or you want to do ethical hacking or forensics, you have to really know your stuff, right? So with pen test, with this exam, you are they are testing your knowledge. You are not going to actually break or hack anything. So uh, it's also a, a, like a good uh, certification to have on those lines. Right now, let's look at uh, GIC, uh, GIAC uh, penetration tester. This certification, I think, last time I checked, 2019, 18, it was around like seven thousand dollars. I'm not, I don't know if they've reduced the price now or what is going on with it, but G Pen was around seven thousand dollars, and. Uh, mostly DOD, Department of Defense, and other big companies, they pay for their uh, cybersecurity employees to go for this training and get certified, right? On individual basis, not really seeing anybody who will just pay seven grand for a certification, right? Uh, so 
but there are other options out there that are a bit cheaper that I think will really test your penetration testing or ethical hacking skills than GPEN, right? But GPEN is still nice to have, uh, but expensive, right? So uh, GPEN is also one of the pen testing certifications that you can pursue if you want to go the route of uh, pen testing. Now let's look at uh, some other ones on here. So the most popular when it comes to pen testing certifications uh, is CEH. CEH is the most popular, right? Now with CEH, uh, it is administered by EC Council. EC Council, they are like the godfathers when it comes to penetration testing or ethical hacking. I mean, hands down, they are they are like the ISC square uh, when it comes to cybersecurity certifications. Uh, EC Council is the is kind of like the ISC square when it comes to ethical hacking, right? They've been around for a long time. Uh, they have a lot of really good training when it comes to ethical hacking. Now, uh, I think for they also have like uh, the the. CEH uh, practical something also uh, certification out there, right? So that focuses really on the hands-on uh, portion, right? But mostly if you you want to take this, they have a training where you go through the whole entire training and then you take the uh, uh, exam, right? But there are also some folks who have not, who don't know where to even begin when it comes to ethical hacking, who still have these certifications because they just sat for, got some dumb questions, sat for the exams and passed. But if you have C H, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean you can do ethical hacking, right? It just means you pass the exam. Now, if you have the knowledge and skill and you can actually do it, that is a plus, right? So uh, now we are going to look at the most difficult of all ethical hacking certifications. And with this certification, you are not going to, you know, do any multiple choice. You are actually going to hack into five uh systems right so this certification is by offensive security offensive security is one of the hands-on by far one of the hands-on uh ethical hacking uh certifications that are out ethical hacking uh certification companies that are out there so they are most popular when it comes to ethical hacking is osc oscp now the oscp uh, they have their training. They will take you through the training. And also uh, you get to sit for the exam, I think once or twice, right? But the last time I I uh, I checked, and the last time I took this, it was, I think it was almost like $800 or something for the training together with the exam, right? Now I'm not sure how much it's going to be, but I don't think it's going to be anything more than maybe... Uh, 2000, but still don't, I think it is more than 2000. I just recently saw it somewhere. It's probably 2500 or something, right? That is together with the labs. They have like a security lab built already for you that you are going to practice on, capture the flag exercises and stuff. But with this, the exam, with the OSCP exam, it is a 24 hour exam, right? 24 hour uh, exam. And after the 24 hours of you trying to hack into five different systems, uh, after the 24 hours, you have another 24 hours to prepare your report, pen testing report for each of these, you know, for uh, each of the five uh, systems that you breached, right? That is if you are successful and you're able to breach all of them. So how are they going to know whether you are successful? I kept saying, you know, uh, CTF, capture the flag exercises, so what they do is once you, you are able to hack into the system, uh, what you do is you are uh, they have flags. So they have numbers that they have either on the desktop or somewhere. Uh, if you are able to get to the location where the flag is, you will copy that uh, like that, like the numbers that they have on there and you are going to paste uh, somewhere that they've allocated you for you to do that. So that will indicate that you've passed or you've been able to successfully hack into that system and then you do the next one, you do that. So it's not in any special order, but they have different types of exploits. I know for me, when I took mine, uh, the 
not brute force, but they had uh, one of the exploits that people dread when they take these exams. I think that was the very first and very, very first one that I did, and that was successful. Uh, sometimes you run into rabbit holes. You try to hack into this system, and you run into you know some roadblocks. You stop. You go to a different system. You try to hack into it. You run into another roadblock. Uh, so uh, I think for mine it was it wasn't a brute force attack. Uh, what is the name of this exploit? A uh, very common. I, I really for some reason I can't remember the name of it. Uh, but very hard to do. But also very uh, if you know what you're doing not that hard, easy, uh, but they have five systems. I think three Linux systems and two Windows or uh, vice versa, I don't remember, but yes. Any which ways, with this uh, certification, my point is you are actually going to uh, be hacking into systems. You have 24 hours to hack into five systems, right? If you are successful and you're able to hack, I think you, you're supposed to each, they have allocated points, uh, you're supposed to get at least maybe three or four, depending on which ones you're able to get. Uh, I think it's four. Uh, at least you're able to hack into four. And then you do your report the next day and you submit it and then you get fully certified, right? Uh, so this is, if you have this, anybody who has this certification, I know what you went through and I know what you know, right? Uh, but if you have, so somebody who has this, as opposed to somebody who have just C, E, H, or pen, uh, pen test plus, if you are looking for a job and whoever is interviewing you, they know what these certifications you have to do to get them, they'll pick somebody who has OSCP. I mean, I'll pick somebody with OSCP hands down. So uh, OSCP will really help you build your, your uh, knowledge and skill and also develop you and build your confidence when it comes to ethical hacking side. And so, it is a gold standard when it comes to ethical hacking arena, just like how they say CISSP is the gold standard when it comes to uh, defense, uh, when it comes to the defensive side of uh, security, right? So uh, I know there are some questions in the chat, we'll address those later, but that is the end of the list of certifications, best certifications within 2023, right? If you didn't see any certification in here, it doesn't mean those certifications are not good, to have, uh, all certifications are good to have, uh, mainly because of the skills and knowledge that you are going to gain as you are going through that process of getting that certification, right? But this is from research that we picked from other uh, uh, areas or other schools of thought within the industry. This is what we came up with, right? Uh, this is, I think this was like the top 10 for most, almost all uh, industry reports that we looked at. Okay. So uh, now we are going to jump into Arrhythmus Academy. For everybody on here, if you've not already taken uh, our cybersecurity for beginners free course and also PCI DSS uh, free course, please do. And for anybody looking to get into cybersecurity, so for some of the certifications that we talked about, uh, if you go through our entry level course, uh, it will build you, give you the foundation for Security Plus, Security Analyst, uh, for CISSP, for CISA, right? Uh, but for some of it, like CISA, you need a little bit of auditing on, on top to be able to be almost there. For CISSP, you just need to know how to think like a manager. Uh, together with entry level, you are going to get there, right? So entry level builds you, gives you that foundation. Uh, it covers hands-on training, workshop slash internship, and also job placement assistance. And uh, also for, we have C, uh, PCI DSS training that is also going on. Uh, within uh, our academy. And for other certification courses, we have CISSP and the rest that we also offer, Security Plus and the rest alike uh, that we offer. So uh, please do well, go to our website, take a look at uh, all the training that we have. For PCI, for folks who are interested in PCI DSS, we have PCI DSS specialist, PCI DSS expert. So specialist, three months of training, one month of internship, expert, four months of training, two months of internship. And the difference between the two is with specialists, we are training you to be an internal, uh, an implementer. Uh, if you want to, you know, label it, you're going to be an internal assessor uh, with an with an expert. You are going to gain the knowledge and skill that, you know, everything within is everything within specialist plus you are going to gain the knowledge and skill of a QSA, right? So without a title of a QSA, uh, you are going to gain the knowledge and skill and know how to perform 
PCI DSS audits, external audits uh, coming from the outside. And so these are the two uh, training that we have. So for our next PCI DSS class, it's starting on the 20th. For our cybersecurity, uh, our cybersecurity and field level and all other training, uh, they are, they are self-paced, so you can start at any time. But for PCI, we have the online version, which is self-paced. That goes hand in hand with the live sessions. So the next live session is going to be on the 20th of June is when we are starting the next live session. So uh, now we are going to look for going to questions. And then also, if you want to reach out, uh, Rhythmist Academy on LinkedIn, on YouTube, you can watch all our uh, Arrhythmus cyber chats on there as well. And uh, for myself, Dr. Edu, you can find me on LinkedIn uh, and we can link up. And if you have any questions, we will address it uh, as we move on. So our goal is to make sure you become the best security professional that you can ever be uh, here. So uh, I think there is gonna be a mention, uh, but I'm not sure if the person is on here. Is Vincent on here? I'm not sure if he was able to join us, but for uh, maybe last week or last two weeks, uh, Vincent was the one who was asking the question when Shela was moderating, Vincent was asking, uh, I think he was trying to reach out and uh, if uh, I was going to give the PCI folks special attention like I give to the entry level folks because he wasn't getting attention, but then he just had a meeting with me, I think like three days before, right? So Vincent got a job. My point that I was trying to make is Vincent got a job. Uh, we were working on a job interview that he was going for, right? He got a job, he just got his offer today. So if he was here, I was gonna give him a shout out, but I'm not sure if he was able to join us. But I think most folks will remember Vincent for, from that comment. Uh, so we are going to jump into the questions that we have on here. Okay, so uh, just going through the chat real quick. I think there, okay, there was some back and forth chats going between folks on here. See, okay, CSSP exams is six hours. Yes. Uh, no, so CSSP, uh, I think the six hours version, uh, they, they have, so they have the computer based version, which I think is three hours. The one that I took, my CSSP was six hours, right? It was still the computer version, but then uh, it was the online version. Uh, so mostly it is the written one that is six hours, but now they were trying to do some experiments. And, you know, mine that I took was six hours. That was a little bit a while ago. Uh, but for CISSP, I think it's three hours. Uh, three hours, I think it's three hours with a hundred questions is a uh, hundred plus, right? Depending on how well you do as you're answering the questions. Uh, so yes, I currently have security plus, but I'm yet to learn the BTF, a befitting job. What other certifications do I need? Okay, so uh, for certifications, if you have security plus and you are struggling to get a job, it is not, the more certifications you have that is going to make you competitive or that is going to make it easy for you to get a job, right? Uh, we have to really be able to diagnose that problem. Are you getting interviews where you're not getting the job or your resume is not fetching you anything, right? You have to, you know, at that point, you just have to find you know, what you are doing. Uh, you don't need, I mean, folks, there are a lot of folks on here who have, who got jobs without certifications, right? With zero. They got jobs before they even start for security plus. So it is not, because you don't have the certification. Uh, it is because maybe, you know, you are doing something wrong in the job placement or in the job search process or the interviewing process, you know, somewhere there. So you have to fine tune that rather than just stacking up certifications. Uh, because if you get into that habit, now what you are doing is uh, you are desperately looking for a job. You have security plus, but you can't get a job. If you want to get another certification, guess what you are going to do? You are going to try to take a shortcut. So we're just going to get some practice tests and memorize it and try to you know pass CISA. And that is really not going to help because now you go into interviews and you are going to look like a moron because you don't you are not able to answer simple questions that anybody with that certification that really passed on their own marriage should be able to answer. Uh, 
Is the hands-on and internship the same? No. So for us, the hands-on training and the internship are not the same. The hands-on focuses on how to use tools like Nexus, Plank, Nmap, uh, and the rest, right? Uh, some of the popular tools within the industry. The internship really focuses on projects within the industry. So uh, working on risk assessment, risk registers, working on security assessment for an organization and stuff like that, right? So actually doing the work is the focus of uh, the internship slash, slash workshop. Uh, Morris is asking, uh, what are some of the ways to keep up with cybersecurity trends? Uh, what do you follow or, uh, okay, what do you follow or what do you do to keep up informed? Uh, I think this is a very easy answer. Google, right? Uh, it might sound funny, but yes, actually you just have to, you know, uh, you can literally Google cybersecurity trends and there's going to be trend reports. There's going to be, but one way to really keep up with the industry is industry, annual industry reports, right? For uh, all fairness, annual industry reports. If you go on right now to Google and you type in uh, cybersecurity annual reports, there is a whole list of them. I think we did a security a cyber chat where we did a review of annual reports. Uh, please go to our YouTube channel and check. There is a whole list of them. So Splunk has annual reports. Comptia has annual reports. Some focuses on career, cybersecurity careers. Others will focus on industry, what is going on within the industry. Others focus on vulnerabilities and attacks within the industry. So that is how you're able to keep up, right? Industry, like that is one place. Like, like uh, one spot that you are going to find really good evidence without you know going through different pages and different websites, right? Industry trends reports uh, is where all the information you are looking for will be at. Okay, uh, when is the hands-on training provided? So hands-on training is self-paced. Yes, you go through. Uh, we for so for the hands-on, we work you through to build how to build your own cybersecurity lab. It is self-paced, hands-on. Uh, you go through video lessons, lesson notes, but then if you need help, you can always reach out uh, for us to take you through uh, whichever tool that you are struggling with. How does the CE uh, work during the three years that you are able to renew? Okay, so for Security Plus, you can, to renew Security Plus or most of these certifications, uh, you can retake the exam. Or you can provide certificates from, so let's say you went through uh, Arithmetic, uh, you completed a training with Arithmetic, you have the certificates, you can present that. Uh, that will, will count always. So I think that will be like 40, 40 hours, 40 plus. Uh, if you took some other training elsewhere, if you came to a webinar like this, we can give you a certificate, but that is going to count, I think, for one or two C, uh, CEU or CPE points. Right, so you can you know add all those to it, and then also for Comtia, uh, they have their own CEU training that you can pay for. Uh, once you pay for that and you go through the training, they will add the points to it, and uh, that will you automatically renew. Now, if maybe for example you forgot, and the expiration date passed, you still have ninety days to you know uh, renew before, it, like it, it totally, you know gets. Uh, of their system and you have to write again, right? But it's always good if you want to write again because you are always going to test your knowledge and skills again. Can you explain uh, the difference between, so the PC, difference between PCI classes uh, we explained already. You have a uh, larger skill sets in order to become a PCI DSS compliance officer. So uh, Kenneth, to be a PCI DSS uh, compliance officer or to start anything within PCI, you need to have a good working knowledge in cybersecurity or in IT. I, uh, PCI teach. So uh, George O is asking does PCI, you know, teach you the cybersecurity basics. So for, uh, I'll say if you are just taking a PCI training elsewhere, no. For us, uh, PCI, uh, cybersecurity basics, not really, but we'll take you through uh, a cybersecurity crash course, right? The crash course is a high level overview of cybersecurity. Uh, we do that for three weeks. Right, but that is by no means uh, going to be enough if you have zero background, right? Uh, what that does is it's going to start a conversation of, hey, you need to look more into this. You need to look more into this area of uh, cybersecurity architecture and design, look more into this area, but we try as much as possible to 
break it down and you know go down to the foundation but uh we are pressed for time so we wouldn't be able to the focus is on pci not really on cybersecurity uh, in general but because pci is a build up on cybersecurity we take that time to take you through that as well right what are the mock interviews like uh with this program so for mock interviews if let's say you have an interview on friday uh, we encourage you to send us the job description at least three days before right and what we do is we will go through and analyze uh what really is going to go on during the interview what questions they're going to ask you and stuff and then we get to you and give you mostly for most students now we will do voice notes on whatsapp so we will send you a list of when you send it to us our first thing we will send you a whole list of voice notes hey look at this area look at that they might ask you this on that so we send you that for you to prep to meet us again so when you come back for the second time now we are going to go through we will ask you the questions right and then you answer we polish up no don't answer it that way answer it that way add this to it take that from it so that is how we do the mock interviews okay so the more time that you give yourself and us the more we are able to go through and the more you are going to gain out of it right but if you you just reach out hey i have an interview tomorrow at one or at 9 a.m uh, we, we there's really little that we can do all that we can do is probably if there's time send you some uh give you some pointers on okay look into this look into that how would you answer this and then that will be it for you to go to the interview right so you really have to give yourself time and give us time uh how long will you suggest a newbie in it hold the first cybersecurity job uh before jumping into pci dss so if you are a newbie in it or in cybersecurity, uh, if you go through our cybersecurity entry level course, for us, that will be uh, a good starting point for you to start PCI. Because uh, for our cybersecurity entry level course, uh, it will take you through, uh, well, it will take you from where you are to where you can start working in the cybersecurity industry. So we have a lot of folks working just from taking the entry level course, right? So. When you are done and you've gone through the internship, you are full-blown cybersecurity professional, whether you are working or not, right? So with that knowledge and skill sets, you can jump into the PCI DSS training. Uh, also go to CISA website to sign up for, okay, maybe, okay. So I think like somebody was, uh, Jermaine was uh, maybe probably asked, uh, answering the question of where do I get updates on cybersecurity? What certifications are worth, uh, what certifications are worth it for people making uh, 200K with banking background. So if you are making 200K with banking background and you want to switch into cybersecurity, uh, maybe for your first jump, you are going to have a little bit of pay cut. So uh, before you get scared and you run away, wait. Uh, within the cybersecurity space, just like within any other industry, uh if you want to really get into the 200 plus it's more managerial leadership senior role right so if i'm um, assuming if you are taking uh 200k within the banking industry uh you might probably be holding some maybe senior level role or you know mid-level senior uh, high mid-level role senior level role so those skill sets can you know uh, translate into cybersecurity, and then also because you are coming from a, a a banking background, and you are really up there in the banking background, I will suggest you cycle back and go to the banking side when you get your cybersecurity training, because it will be very easy for you to leverage whatever you have in there. You understand banking in and out, inside and out, and now with the security uh, background, you'll be able to help them. Uh, really secure themselves well as opposed to somebody like myself with no banking background uh, regardless of how much knowledge and skill i have in security i still don't understand banking as well as you right so although you wouldn't also understand security as well as me uh you have an upper hand on me when we go to the banking side to work as security professionals because you understand their language well than me right uh, there are some things they don't have to explain to you me they probably have to explain to me right probably uh all day and i still wouldn't get it so but for certification wise like what i just said you have to go for you know at least start so i'll encourage everybody start from security plus and build yourself up 
to security and uh, to uh, uh, CISSP and, and the rest. Okay. Uh, also, you've seen people making the switch to cybersecurity having to take K. Uh, uh, okay, to take, uh, I'm not really sure about that question, or maybe probably you're talking about pay cuts or uh, pay to uh, on the onset. So uh, if you are starting off in security, and you are really leveraging the, the managerial skills, or maybe you are working as CFO for some company, so you, you know how the C-suite works, and you are coming in with such a knowledge uh, base and skill sets, it's very easy to still get into security and leverage yourself and start with 200 plus, right? Because now you are not just selling, uh, you are selling your skill sets in the managerial leadership role, uh, on top of that, you also as a pretend that you have some cybersecurity knowledge and skill, right? So because for most of these roles, to be a CI, uh, uh, CISO, right, or uh, maybe VP or director of security, uh, you need to have a working knowledge of cybersecurity itself, but you are not necessarily going to be the technical guy on the ground doing all the job, right? So they are looking more at your leadership managerial skills. Uh, giving direction and purpose to the security folks than you actually. So they will really care less, not that they don't need you to have any security knowledge and skill, but they care less if you are very uh, technical and you are, you know, well vested in security, but you can't manage or you can't, you know, lead anybody to save your life. They won't take you, right? So you can still leverage yourself if you are coming in with some, you know, skill sets, a lot of soft skills, uh, from wherever you are coming from. So what do you feel will be more beneficial for individuals that have at least five years experience? Uh, experience is CEH certified PCI or cybersecurity internship. Okay, so it depends on what you want to do, right? Uh, if you think you are lacking, uh, you are lacking uh, some you know, or you have some gaps in your knowledge base and skills, you know, gaps in your skill sets in cybersecurity, you can take the security, uh, cybersecurity internship. If you want to pursue a niche within cybersecurity and you want to do PCI, then yes, with uh, at least five years in IT or cybersecurity, you can do uh, that also as well, right? Uh, and is there a recommended path of education mixed with certificates for PCI track? Yes, so PCI, uh, for us, we will say start with PCI specialist and you can move up to PCI expert. But with certification track, uh, we will say start with security plus, right? And then build yourself to maybe security analyst, uh, build yourself to CISA or SIM, and then C, uh, uh, no, not CISA, and CISSP or SIM, right? So that will be the path in terms of uh, certifications, right? And then eventually uh, you can become certified as an uh, ISA or QSA, depending on where you are working and which company wants to take you to, to get that certification from uh, PCI. But at that time, you would have had the prerequisite certifications, you have the knowledge and skill already, so during the, those training is going to be, you know, you, you just have to go through the motions. You have a program for only internship. Yes, Michael, we do have only uh, internship slash workshop, uh, cybersecurity internship slash workshop, but we don't have just internship slash workshop for PCI yet, right? Uh, because mostly folks who want to do PCI internship, we don't know what you don't know. And before we can put our tag on you and say, you are good, uh, you've gone through our PCI internship, you are good to go. We have to know what you know first. So i.e. you have to go through our training and then the internship. Okay. How close are the internship provided uh, after getting into the course or does it depend on what projects you have? Oh, so the internship, mostly you work on almost like 10 different projects, right? So we try to expose you to almost everything that you are going to get exposed to on the job. So there are different projects that you work on uh, 10, but for every cohort, you work on at least 10 projects. Uh, do we assist? Yeah, so with resume, rewrite and all that, that is part of our job placement assistant training, and that is for all training 
uh, for so for all major training like PCI, uh, security, uh, cyber security and free level, and the rest, they all come with uh, job placement assistance. Uh, the next question from John says, so you need cybersecurity basics to switch to PCI. Yes, you need to have a working knowledge in cybersecurity or in, P in uh, IT in general, you know, for us to say you are good, you can get into PCI. Without that, you probably have to go through our cybersecurity entry level course and then switch to PCI, right? Uh, but I know there are some folks who are preaching that you don't need any IT background or cybersecurity background, you can start PCI. I don't know what they are teaching, or maybe they have some magic stick somewhere that I don't know of. But uh, for us, if you don't have any uh, background in cybersecurity or IT, uh, you have to do double the work, right? It's not like you can you can do it, but you have to do double the work. And most ever, almost everybody here, you are a working dad, a working mom, uh, a working you know uh, somebody. So combining two courses in one and combining your life and everything that is going on uh, would be almost impossible. And we don't want you to be ineffective, right? Get in the middle of uh, the, in the middle of the course and you realize, you know, you cannot pull this off, right? So that is why we encourage you at least get that training from uh, our cybersecurity entry level course or, uh, you know, have that coming into it and it will be easier, way easier for you. So what are the, security applications used to audit and monitor threats. Uh, so Kenneth, so security applications that are used to uh, monitor threats and track threats, uh, there is a whole list of them. If we want to look at it from vendor, uh, from your vulnerability scanning tools, your IPS and IDS from your SIM tools. So some of the vendors, Splunk, uh, Nexus, uh, Qualys, uh, Curator, uh, Archer, there is a whole list of them, right, uh, that we can use. So, uh, and all these are, so we can look at it from uh, from categories in terms of vulnerability scanning tools or SIM tools or SAW tools. And we can also break it down into vendors. So within those groups, there are vendors who are making those tools within those groups. So as an example, if you take vulnerability scanning tools, there are a lot of vendors, uh, but the most popular ones, Qualys, Nexus, uh, and the list goes on, right? Uh, and and Nexus is, is is the name of the tool, but the company is Tenable, right? So there is a whole list that we can go through. And now every uh, almost everybody and their mom is also trying to come up with some tool. So everybody's there are a lot of new tools that are coming out, uh, Drata and uh, Drata and the re like. There's almost new ones out there, but mostly for the different categories they all follow the same format in terms of interface, right? So if you know how to use one, you can really use any other one within that space, right? They fall, follow the same uh, in, like uh, interface, so it's, it's easier. So that is why, like I always, if you know how to use one in each category, uh, you can function anywhere within the industry. So is it better to obtain, a uh, question is, is it, is it better to obtain CISA? Uh, Let's finish this. So there's a question, uh, is it better to obtain CISA certification first as a newbie or Security Plus? So I'll go with Security Plus because it is gonna help you uh, pass CISA easy, right? I'll go with Security Plus because Security Plus in terms of technicality is difficult than CISA. Right. So if you go through Security Plus and you really master the content of Security Plus, scaling CISA will become easier. And what you will need in addition to Security Plus to scale CISA will be to learn the auditing side of uh, information security auditing, right? The, like the technicalities of auditing when it comes to information security and auditing in general. Uh, that is the only thing that you have to add, right? And then also some, you know, how to think like a manager, you know, uh, on those lines rather than, but in terms of like the technical side, uh, Security Plus uh, is much difficult than uh, season, right? So uh, do you have a program for veterans? So for, yes, for veterans, uh, we we are going back and forth with VTEC application. Hopefully we get approved and uh, all our veterans will be able to go through without paying a dime. Uh, it's gonna be on VA. 
So hopefully uh, we'll make an announcement on that once we get approved. I want to get into the internship program. How do I register? So you go to our website, you will see workshop, cybersecurity workshop. Uh, you can register there for the internship. The next one is probably going to start uh, somewhere late June, right? Uh, so uh, Kenneth is asking, I think they are doing bait and switch, get you into the program and then uh, sell you something else, uh, the hook. I'm not really sure what Kenneth is talking about. Uh, if you can unmute yourself and uh, speak, Kenneth, maybe, like, I don't know if you're referring to us or you're referring to anybody else. You are referencing to some programs out there that were oh. selling you. You don't need any technical background. Mm -hmm. And I've been kind of researching and looking around because of that fact. And what I was what I was seeing or come to a conclusion, sell them just a basic old bait and switch. We're gonna give you this, get you hooked once you get in. Well, you know, you need this one more thing <laughs> to get where you want to be. It's yeah, it's one of the, you know, it, it's all way of doing things, but that's what I believe it is, honestly. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, true, true, true. But for us, uh, like everybody who's been uh, on here with us for the whole time, uh, there is no uh, easy way out, right? You have to do the work. And we will tell you as it is. So uh, whatever we tell you exactly is what is going to be in there. Uh, so for somebody who's also asking, uh, how long is the internship? So our internships, uh, two months, and sometimes a bit longer than two months, depending if you are not done with the projects, uh, we try to make sure we are done with the projects before, because it's not just by time. I mean, uh, we are doing this, uh, it is our time also. So we could have easily said, hey, uh, you guys, you are able to finish only seven projects, so that's it. But we try to you know, look at the quality side as well. So we rather spend more, two more weeks to finish all 10, rather than to finish early and not uh, finish on time and not uh, be able to, to get on all the projects, right? Jason, go ahead. And then if you have any questions, you can unmute yourself and raise your virtual hand and we will address the questions and then we, we will wrap it up here shortly. Go ahead, Jason. All right, doctor, thanks. Paint me a realistic picture. So as somebody who's getting the search, going to work on making sure that my resume is on point as you recommended and getting the interviews. Looking at this climate now with jobs not wanting remote or wanting them more in-house and then being a foreigner, trying to get that on top of that, how best would you circumvent all of those to make yourself the best option for remote jobs? in your opinion. Okay, so, uh, and Jason, uh, Jason is speaking from Japan, right? Right, yeah. Jason? Okay. So, uh, Jason, I'm, I'm not sure for Japan, I've not done the research on that, but stateside, uh, now when it comes to security jobs, cyber security jobs, uh, mostly I'll say is almost like 80 to 90% remote, maybe 20% hybrid, Right, uh, probably 10%, you know, uh, in person, you have to be there every day, right? Uh, those like the 10% predominantly focuses on the government side, uh, you have to be there, right? Uh, but mo for, most, for most companies, previously, before COVID, uh, remote jobs were a bit hard, hard, like they were a bit harder to find, right? Uh, but COVID has taught most companies they don't really need all that extra cost of having everybody come to the office. Now, some companies, they still need you there, but even for those companies, uh, they are doing hybrid, right? So you come to the office maybe twice uh, a week and three days you are working from home, but I'm not sure how that is for Japan, but also now getting into uh, how to make yourself really stand out, right? I think regardless of race, gender, color, what is going to set you apart from everybody is the knowledge you are bringing, the knowledge and skills you are bringing to the table. What employers hear during any interview is what can you do for them, right? How are you going to help your company move from point A to point B? 
in terms of security, right? So uh, regardless of their own perceptions of who you are based on your color, gender, race, uh, I think if you go to 10 interviews and all 10 think alike uh, in terms of whatever their, their uh, preconceptions are, if you are coming in with a lot of, you know, blazing with a lot of knowledge and skill, and it's, it's like, it's very obvious, you know your stuff. Uh, I think nine of them will pick you because at the end of the day, uh, they are in business to make money, right? It's like, if you had, uh, you, like you have to do brain surgery, you are sick, you have, you have to operate on your brain. Uh, I think at that point, you really care less who is going to do the operation, regardless of what your preconceptions are. So if you have some, you know, uh, preconceived idea about a certain race, gender, and there you are on your bed and, you know, guess who shows up? The, like the person or the group of people that you don't like. And they are the best in the industry. And that is like the best option you have now. I don't think you are going to say, you know what, I'll pass on that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so uh, same thing here, right? Uh, and I have seen that I've done that uh, both in the military and in like in the corporate side, right? Uh, so always do 120%, go above and beyond, make sure you know your stuff. So that is why I always preach continuous learning, right? Whatever Dr. Edu gives you, Arithmetic gives you is not enough. Keep pushing, look for different avenues, look for other things to supplement, right? Uh, broaden your horizon. Uh, that is what is really gonna set you apart, right? But if you are going in, you are doing bare minimum like everybody else, obviously they are gonna choose who they like. But if you make it so difficult for them, oh, I really like Jason, but Kenneth, Kenneth, I don't like him, but he seems like he can do the job. They will pick Kenneth. And mostly for interviews, it's not really only one person grading you. Right? It's not only one person. At least you're going to go through three or four interviews. So just like Vincent, Vincent went through four interviews. Everybody who interviews you is going to give you, you know, like they are going to score you. Right? So let's say Kenneth just hates you for no reason. He gives you a one. Now, uh, Elikum and Adrian, they all give you five out of five, five out of five, five out of five. You are going to get it. Right. So uh, it's not uh, only one person who is going to decide. So what I'll say is make sure you, know, you are really up to speed. You are above and beyond what you need for whatever certification you are holding. Right. So uh, make it so obvious that they cannot really pass like pass you by right they like they have to really con like consider you so even if they are going to say they are not going to give it to you they have to go to bed really you know to sleep with themselves and uh, really really they didn't make a good decision on that one right so uh that is my advice to everybody uh before you go and also for interviews uh for interviews right uh the job descriptions Make sure you are going into interviews. First, then you have to, your resume, you have to know it inside and out. You don't want to put anything on your resume that you, you can't defend or you don't even remember you have it on there because you just copied and pasted somebody's resume. Right? That is the last thing you want to do. Two, everything on the job description, make sure you know. And what I also advise is uh, you have to make sure you know more about the company you are interviewing for than the person who is interviewing you from the company. Right, so you because most people will just focus on your cybersecurity technical stuff, and then you are there and they are like, hey, what do you know about our company? You know, they're like, uh, well, I'm not sure whether you really you want to marry somebody you don't know. Okay, <laughs> that is not going to work, right? So make sure you know the company inside out. You go to their website, read their mission statement, vision statement. Right. And all that is also going to help you in your like in your in answering your questions. So if I go to their website, I've seen what they are about uh, in terms of their vision, their mission, what they've been doing. I've seen pictures of, you know, I'm able to size them in my own way. Now, when they ask me, why do you want to work for a company? That is a freebie. I just go off their vision statements, make it my own. So this is what you guys want to do. My vision or my own personal you know, missions align with whatever you are doing. Regardless whether mine aligns or not, now their vision is my vision. <laughs> and that is what employers want to hear. So 
uh, whether that is holy the truth or not, I, I just borrowed their vision, it became mine. And now they'll be there nodding like, okay, okay. So this guy really, you know, did his homework. And I think everybody on here, if you are the one interviewing, uh, you pick somebody who knows more about your company than you do. Than somebody who just have the technical skills coming in. Because at that point, if you just have technical skills, you have no interest learning about a company. At that point, you are just in for the money. And like they want somebody who is in for more than just the money. Who really wants, who is showing that commitment that, you know, they have vested interest in the company. So I hope that answers your question, Jason. Thank you. I would only add the only caveat of I'm trying to get an American job. So not really worrying about remote in Japan, American okay. job. Oh, okay, 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 got you, got you, got you. So for like American jobs, I mean, I think now there are more remote jobs than uh, jobs that are in person. So. Thank you, Doc. Okay, you're welcome. Go ahead, George. Uh, yes, you can ask your question, George. Okay, I think George sound is down. So uh, let's, I'm not sure if there are some more, like I think we we looked at all the questions. Okay, which, there's another question in there. Uh, which of your program is best for a NES that has no cybersecurity background? So with no cybersecurity background, zero, everything, our cybersecurity and field level course is going to be the best uh, beginning point for you. But before you do, we encourage you to go through the cybersecurity for beginners to get some situational awareness right about cybersecurity. Maybe probably uh, you see cybersecurity is not as sexy as you think it is. So you wouldn't want to do the switch. At least uh, that will give you some background into cybersecurity, the job, the, uh, job roles within security, what they do within those job roles. And then also you can hop onto our YouTube channel, uh, go through some of our previous students who are currently working, uh, what they are doing on the job, and you know at least uh, get some really good situation awareness before you commit to anything. Right? That way, at least you know this is what cybersecurity is about. This is what I'm going to get myself into. Uh, because sometimes some folks will reach out and say, hey, I want to be a penetration tester. So is your goal really to break into the cybersecurity industry or to become a penetration tester? Right. If your goal is to break into the security industry, then there's a path for you. If you want to be a penetration tester, then you have a long way to go. Right. Uh, if you want to be uh, a penetration tester, not for fun or by hobby, but to actually do pen testing for people to pay you to do it, then there's a path for you. Right. But uh, that is not going to be within the time frame that you want to uh, be able to switch. So uh, mostly. So if you want to break into the industry, our cybersecurity and free level course is going to be the best option for you. Uh, so without any more questions, I think we have some on YouTube. We are going to look at those really quickly and then we'll wrap it up. I think like mostly uh, most of the YouTube uh, ones are also this, like similar ones that we addressed uh, on here. All right, so uh, we will be wrapping it up here shortly. So next week, uh, there is not gonna be any cyber chat next week. Uh, how many uh, How many PCI career, uh, career loops like, oh, oh, okay, okay. So you're asking how PCI DSS career looks like on day-to-day -day basis. I Hopefully that is what you're asking. Uh, so just like what you do as a security professional, it doesn't really change. Uh, for remote uh, PCI jobs, it's big boy, big girl rule, right? Uh, you are working on projects. Some of these projects you have to come up with, right? And mostly in organizations with PCI, they just leave you alone. Nobody is really going to uh, bother you. They, you know, you come in there as the expert. They expect you to, you know, uh, take the ball and run with it. So you are going to be the one coming up with a strategy for them to uh, pass. You are going to be the one tracking 
all the you know PCI activities that they have to do, like ASB scans, spend testing, and all that. And you know, when they have to do it timely manner, you are going to be the one uh, serving as a liaison between your company and the QSA company. You are so there's a whole list of things that you have to be doing, uh, but nobody is going to come up with a timetable for you. You come up with your own timetable and you are on your own. Big boy, big boy, big boy, big girl rule. At the end of the day, what they want to hear is, oh, your company passed your uh, PCI audits. What goes into it? Mostly they really care less. But if you fail, then the CEO will know about it and everybody else is going to know about it, right? So it's a high visibility uh, role that can really make you shine or that can really unmake you within the company. Right? But if you know what you are doing, uh, mostly it's going to be an easy uh like an, not an easy job because there's a lot to be done within it, but a very less stressful to a certain point, right? Uh, yes, so uh, our training is going to help you to gain the knowledge and skill. Not just that, but you are, we are going to give you some in-house tools and also uh, the strategy going into any PCI job. Uh, you can function in any PCI role, right? Uh, PCI consultant, specialist, name it. And also if you have to work in a QSA company, uh, uh, as a PCI expert in a QSA company helping with audits, we help you with that also as well. So for us, for all our training, our main goal is what are you going to do on the job? So because we focus on that, certifications become easier. If your focus is on certifications, you are going to get a certificate, but what are you going to do on the job? You know, still remains, right? So first day on the job as a PCI professional, now what? <laughs> Right. Let's say they didn't even interview you. They just gave you the job. Now what? What are you going to do? Right? Uh, you, are, you can't go and ask yourself, yeah, what are we doing for today? There's nothing like that. You are on your own. Right? As a security professional, security analyst, your manager might probably tell you, hey, we're working on this project, that project. Go work on this. But then that's it. You can't go back and ask them, how do you work on this project? Right? You're on your own. So what are you going to do on the job is the question everybody should be asking themselves. Uh, so is the training you are gaining preparing you for what you are going to be doing on the job or not, right? And most of that you can even test during interviews, whether what you've been asked is, you know, in line with what you've been training for and whether your training has well prepared you for even the interview or left alone actually doing the job. So, uh, all right, everyone, uh, we're wrapping up for tonight. I appreciate everybody's time. Uh, like usual, you know, uh, you could have been anywhere else, but you chose to be here with us on CyberChat uh, to develop yourself and grow as security professionals. Uh, there will be no CyberChat next week, uh, but there will be one, you know, the following week after next week. So next weekend, we are going to be off for, that is the week of the 3rd, 3rd June, uh, no, not 2nd June, we are not going to meet for CyberChat. I appreciate everybody's time. If you need help, uh, or you need any questions answered, uh, please email. Uh, so there's a last question in there. Can an individual do PCI with Comtia A+. Yes, Comtia A+, you have security, uh, you have uh, some IT uh, knowledge and skill coming into it. Uh, so yes, we can still polish you up on that for PCI. So uh, before uh, I answer that, we're wrapping up. So I appreciate everybody's time. We meet again. Two weeks from today, uh, after the after June June second uh, is when our next meeting is going to be. So our next meeting is going to be on June 9th, right? I appreciate everybody's time. Have a great night and a great weekend. Uh, if you need help, you can always reach out on uh, any of our arithmetic channels, and we will be glad to uh, help. And also, if you've not joined our uh, WhatsApp platform, please do. Uh, we will send an email. Uh, with a link to the WhatsApp uh, group. So everybody else who is not on it can also join, right? I uh, appreciate everybody's time. Have a great night. We'll meet again on the 9th or on the 9th. Yes, I think on the 9th uh, of June. Uh, thank you very much. Have a great weekend. Bye Have a good night, Dr. Adu. Thank good you. Night.